This DVD explores holistic beekeeping methods using the Top Bar Hive system. You will be learning how you can promote the health and well-being of the honeybee using the Top Bar Hive as well as Vital Hive management techniques. Sustainable beekeeping methods honor the true nature of the honeybee and encourage genetic diversity by allowing for natural reproduction and living environments that support adaptation. We at Backyard Hive use and promote a specific approach to keeping bees. This approach respects the hive as an organism and focuses on holistic methods that support the honeybee both in the hive and as a species. We refer to those who utilize these methods as bee guardians. The bee guardian is committed to working with the true nature of the bee, allowing the bees to maintain a strong immune system through organic practices and methods that do not overly stress the colonies, emphasizing instead the well-being of the bees. Using beekeeping methods that respect the honeybee and the local environment also helps the honeybee as a species to recapture their genetic vitality and diversity. This animation illustrates how the colony of bees organizes the combs in the top bar hive. It is a rare glimpse into the inner world of the honeybee and an important step in understanding the top bar hive. The organizational structure of the combs seen here is very similar to what you would find in a naturally constructed hive. The darker colored comb is where the bees have constructed their brood nest. The thicker combs near the back are full honeycombs weighing six to seven pounds each. When the bees are first installed in the hive, the false back is used to encourage the bees to establish their brood nest towards the front of the hive. Here we see the false back already installed for the new bees. After a few days, the false back is moved to the back of the hive. The bees immediately begin the construction of combs that will be the brood nest, shown here as the dark brown comb. The queen begins to lay eggs in their brood nest and the colony increases in size. As the season progresses, the bees will begin extending the brood nest out in roughly a teardrop shape. Large sheets of collected pollen are located near the brood nest, seen here as bright orange combs. As the nectar sources become abundant, the bees will begin to store honey in capped cells, filling up the back of the hive with honey stores for winter. The brood will be here, toward the front of the hive. The brood comb will be darker and lightly attached to the sides of the hive. On either side of the brood nest will be mixed combs with pollen and nectar. Then extending toward the back of the hive, we will find full combs of honey which will have noticeably more brace comb. At the far end of the hive, the bees may have not drawn out complete combs or they will have combs filled with uncapped nectar. Notice the placement of the spacers which accommodate the fatter honeycombs. Let me tell you a little bit. Again, I know that these combs are not attached because they're too small to be attached, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm using this as my leverage here. I also can use this like this as a key. And they should be kind of peeking their little noses out. So what we have here is, notice how I'm, let me just show you how I'm handling this bar. See, I'm kind of just letting it have its own gravity. I'm not holding it like this, which would tend to get me to do something wrong with it. I don't want to tilt it like this, okay? See, it could fall right off there. Now this is all capped brood right here. This is capped honey. Yeah, see the white film over this? And this is capped brood.
It may become necessary to remove single combs intermittently during the summer months. You will need to chart the bees' progress through the top bar window. As the months go by, watch the bees building out the combs progressing towards the back of the hive. You will want to be sure that they do not build out a full comb on the last top bar at the back of the hive. If this happens, you will have no way of accessing the last comb and detaching it from the sides. The bees will also attach this last comb to the false back, making it very difficult to remove the comb. When the bees begin drawing out a comb on that last bar, it is time to make a single comb harvest.